What's up Gunpla Modelers? This is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models and Happy New Year to all my friends and subscribers that are watching my videos right now on my YouTube channel. Besides Happy New Year, I hope everyone had a great holiday. Merry Christmas, Winter Solstice, anything that you guys uh, celebrate. I um, hope everyone enjoyed their holidays with their families and their friends. And I hope nothing but the best this holiday year. Uh, this is technically my first video for calendar year 2024. And as the title suggests, we're going to begin reviewing all the model kits that I've made for calendar year 2023. Like always, I'll just discuss some of the kits I worked on, um, the thought process that I was going through at those days, uh, you know, at that time, um, whether I tried something different, whether I tried something new. But I just did the same, you know, same old thing. And also trying out new ideas and techniques that I wanted to share with everyone. And uh, some kits uh, didn't come out the way I wanted, while others came out pretty perfect. And even though I wanted to do a lot more, surprisingly, was that not that much of a amount of kits that I worked on. But I, the one thing I kept my promise on whenever I build a kit is always having fun with my builds and to share it with all my, you know, everyone who have been watching my channel for a very long time. So with that being said, let's look at the first kit that I started building for 2023. We will begin with my first build for calendar year 2023. And that was, of course, the 144 scale high grade aerial Gundam from the Mobile Suit Gundam Witch of Mercury animated series. Since I built the Le Frit and the Begir Boo the year before, about a month prior to this, I was very pleased with its overall construction work and I was expecting the same thing but a lot better with this kit. The high grade version of the Ariel is without a doubt superb in many acts aspects and details. I feel like that this is more of a refined look of how the aerial should be than what it's supposed to be. But the one thing that I enjoyed the most, it it borrowed techniques from two lines of kits, 30 minute mission kits and iron blooded orphan kits. The iron blooded orphan kits, you could see in the designs of the legs and around the chest area, around the uh, torso or maybe more in the, in the knees, but everything else felt like a 30-minute mission build. I guess maybe Bandai has been slowly but surely uh, allowing us to try out new techniques, you know, building the 30-minute mission kits, and then getting our hands on this one was like an easy build. And it is, without a doubt, a very, very easy build to, to, uh, to work on in this kit. No problems with painting, no problems with uh, placement of, uh, of cleaning it up and all that stuff. There are some option parts that you can buy, like the uh, backpack that was used in one of the episodes. Um, sadly, there was no other attachments that you can put on that was based on the anime or, you know, anything like we're, we're accustomed to when you see like a, a Bill Diver series. But regardless of the case, it is a perfect platform to build something out of if you want to customize it with other kits or other lines. I've, this year I've seen so many customizations of the aerial, which I was like saying to myself, you know what? I may get myself another aerial and give it a whack at customization. But that's something for the future. Aerial high grade is one of the best high grade kits that was came out from the new series. And we're going to see a lot more of these and other versions coming soon. My next build was going to be a, a custom diorama build that I've been meaning to work on for quite a long time. This, this, these two kits, which is basically the the Jagan Ecos type, one forty four scale high grade, and the for the first time building it the um, Gira uh, Zulu, both of them from the uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn animated series. Was were, were kits that I had been meaning to build for a very, very, very long time. 
and I would, I would say to myself, now it's time for me to work on it. And I had a great idea, a very amazing idea. And the idea was to put these two guys head, head, head to head to each other. But I needed something in the background, something to give it a little bit more contrast, a little bit more detail. So began me building my diorama build, which was basically a large facade-like structure which allowed the two mobile suits to hunt each other down. I will post a photo, um, I'll put, put the, the um, base here, but unfortunately I couldn't fit it on this, on this um, turntable because it would have not worked well and it's too big. But I'll put it up in a minute. But it was my first uh, attempt to do something like this for MosquitoCon and it worked pretty well and I was glad for the overall results. Granted, it could have required more work, you could say, but that's the beauty of diorama. Sometimes you think you put everything in it and there's still more to go, more to do. You don't know until you're done, until you're actually done. It's a dior making a diorama is not an exact science, just an art form that you have to find your, you know, your middle ground. And using these two guys, the um, Zulu hunting down the Ecos type, was a great idea uh, at that moment. The bazooka was from one of the uh, option weapon parts set that I got a year before when I went to Comic Con. So, and it added on extra um, decals, as you can see there, and and uh, d detail of the kit. It it was fun. Building this was fun. Detailing the the. Um, the uh, Girazulu uh, was was a joy. Um, granted, there were some issues here and there. The shoulders needed to be a little cleaned up on on the Ika side, but it's basically standard vanilla uh, Jagan, which you could pretty much see everywhere uh, in var every variant. Uh, the same thing holds true with the with the Girazulu. Some certain areas needed a, a lot of work and cleaning, but with time and effort, it works out. I, I didn't win, no big deal, but it was something to, you know, I learned something new at that, uh, at that show, and me building this, and I'm hoping to not do the same thing again, but something else differently. And now I know where to go with for, for future builds. My next kit happened to be the real grade High New Gundam 144 skip. I have never built any of the High New Gundams. I have the Master Grade version. And at one point I wanted to buy the uh, standard High Grade version. But I had to get the real grade because it looked really nice. After building the um, Heavy Weapons type version of the New Gundam, I was really, really intrigued with getting the uh, High New. And since P Bandai had the, um, they were selling the Mega Bazooka Cannon, which you see here in the, in the background, I decided to get that and put, built both of them together for MosquitoCon 2022. And uh, it came out really good with the, with the metallic, with the blue, uh, with, with the white, with the light blue, a little bit of grays here and there, um, everything came out spot on and I was very very pleased with the overall result of this uh, I could have won unfortunately somebody had their I knew there and that was a lot better than what I had present but that's okay I'm I'm fine with what I got you know you cannot you know we all cannot be winners there has to be losers but this was my prize uh, piece uh, at the show besides the diorama and I really enjoyed building it it was really nice um, it is an expensive kit maybe now it's a little cheaper you could say um, I don't know if you're able to get the bazooka I have not seen P Bandai talk about it or if they have it at their um, if they're going to be reissuing it again maybe they are maybe they aren't I don't know um, but there are third party bazookas if you're planning to get it and make something new out of it the High New is, without a doubt, a joy to build. I was surprised. Yes, there were a lot of parts, a lot of small parts, a lot of intricate parts, but it was a surprise build. And the construction of the, the funnel pack, how you open and close it, spot on. I was 
deeply surprised with that. Um, everything, everything about it was was nice. It was nice. It was, just, you know, I felt like I was, I was, well, whatever I was feeling was, it was great, and I enjoyed it. And if you guys get see this at any store and have a coupon or something like that, don't hesitate to get this. I think maybe Gundam Planet may have this, and if not, they better because. This thing will sell out very fast, and it is a, it is very pretty to look at. You know, just looking at it, came out great, absolutely great. I, I have a dark shelf, and I want to maybe one day get myself some clear shelves, so I can put put it up and you know just marvel at its work because it was a good work to work with, and I hope you guys can get your hands on this as well. My next build was the P Bandai GM Spartan. And uh, this was a surprise kit to get. Um, I was intrigued with its overall color design and looks. Um, something I've never seen before. Obviously, there's like a billion versions of the gym everywhere. Um, but this one pretty much sold me on this. Um, just basically a Special Forces commando type uh, mobile suit. Um, Great placement of armor plating and um, detail everywhere. It was also another great kit to build. I know it's based off the um, um, GM Sniper 2 um, kit, um, which I did get. It, you know, it was um, at a cheap price, and one day I'll have to build it. But yeah, it was like, okay, that, this is neat. I, I like it. The machine gun, the, the triple barrel machine gun is unique. But I'm not digging the side, um, the side grip, how it is, you know, not all weapons are going to be, you know, amazing, but okay. I like the bayonet that come with it and the little shoulder, um, shoulder mounted, uh, missiles, which can be placed on either left or right shoulders. I wanted to get this and paint it and build it in time for Mosquito Con, but it, it came late and there was no way for me to do it. And when I painted green, I tried, I actually tried to do a little bit of highlighting, which was my first time highlight, doing some highlights on the kit. And it came out really nice. The highlighting on this kit well, came out perfect. Um, not completely perfect. I know there are certain areas that may require a little bit more work, but with the decals, you can barely see it. And it was a nice kit to work with. Um, I know that there should have been a new reissued version, a uh, new re um, reissue of the Spartan um, from P. Bandai. Um, it would be nice to see this as a master grade. Now that, you know, if this is based off the uh, GM Sniper 2 frame, they could pretty much do that as a P. Bandai. You know, everybody would go crazy for, for getting a kit like that. But I would recommend getting this kit because it is a. Um, an excellent kit. Um, I wouldn't even know where to begin with customization since it's more of a compact kit, but you could probably figure something out with this, maybe add some other details. The one thing that I was not fond of is those zipper, uh, the zipper plating that's on the shoulder. Even though you have two in the front, you don't have two in the back. And that showing that like little flimsy thing kind of like takes it out of me for some odd reason um but it is what it is you, you know you have to enjoy what you got there but yeah spartan uh, really was an enjoyable build to work with so my next kit that i started working on was the 144 scale hydrate garibaldi or garibaldi how you pronounce it from the Witch of Mercury animated uh, series. This was a very, very unique kit um, from the series, and I like the, um, the shoulder binders that came with it. Um, this had this required a lot of work uh, for painting, even though it came with a lot of stickers and clear parts, clear parts that I for, keep forgetting to put on this kit. Um, it still is a good looking kit in, in all aspects in the design. Um, don't think I remember having any issues with it other than um, some sanding issues here and there, but it, those were like 
non nearly almost non existent. You do have to carefully mask it off if you want to paint off the shield the binders on the you know, the detail on the binders, the detail on the shoulders and the waist unit, um, certain areas on the feet. And when I was making this, um, I was also uh, I, I I was also saying to myself, you know what? There was another kit that I wanted to paint, and that is, of course, the other mobile suit that um, that came out with the series. Uh, I'll show it to you in a moment. But I really liked how this came out. Really, it it really is a beautiful looking kit, and I used a brighter red tone for this, um, just just to keep it simple and and basic. Um, I know that. Bandai Premium Bandai has come out with the add-on extra add-on parts for it to make it the final form of the of the Darabaldi, uh at the ending of the series. So I was I was kind of surprised to see that when the series was over and he this mobile suit came back. I, I wish the full mechanics line of kits could have introduced this because I really 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 enjoyed building this kit um, and. Who knows? That's maybe wishful thinking. But the high grade kit, you'll never have a problem with. This is a nice kit, and you can pretty much find it anywhere along with the aerial as well. The other kit that I was working on was, of course, Ghoul's the Lands kit, the one forty four scale high grade Ghoul's the Lands. Surprisingly, this is not one of my favorite kits. It's beautiful, yes, chunky, great. Um, basic, very, very basic. And there's various versions of this kit. What I don't like about it is the legs. There's a seam line that cuts right through the middle of the leg. This could have been easily fixed with side parts, you know, like instead of the front and back legs connecting to the, to the kit, it should have been two side um, um, parts followed by a two middle parts that goes in the front and the back. That you know that pretty much takes care of that. I know maybe that's too much construction, too much ideas, but you have that problem with the leg and going from from the bottom of the calf all the way up to your thigh. You have a, a part going right through the middle, and that was like I was like, that's a lot of work to clean. I feel bad for anybody who has to, like, when they get this kit, they got to clean it up and detail and make sure you don't see that seam line. Um, it is a challenge, granted, but I think that it could have been done more. Now, you know, obviously, you could probably find it in a cheaper price. It is a good starter kit. Uh, you know, I agree with that. It's a starter kit. You can build it. You can customize it. But if you want it like a normal build and... You gotta put a lot of work in it. I I did um I did like um three kit build. I did the uh, backpack, which was not painted, and the um the demi trainer, which I didn't paint it as well. And I built I built this one. But when I was building the uh, Darabaldi, I said let me paint this guy because at least I can get these two guys to look identical to each other. You know they're the same kit. Um, didn't make it bright red. I made it a little bit of a darker tone red, but it looks good. Uh, it, right now, the lighting doesn't show pretty well of the red, but it is a good color tone. Fun build. Uh, just be, be forewarned. A lot of work. When the summer kicked in, I decided to do a theme. I called it the Summer of Freedom. I had so many Freedoms and Strike Freedom kits that I said, I think it was about time I started building it. And, be, and I began with the new kit that you see here, the Master Grade SD Freedom Gundam from the Mobile Suit Gundam animated, uh, Seed animated series. I built the Freedom Gundam uh, SD and Cross Silhouette version. I don't have those anymore. But, they did, but when Bandai decided to make this in Master Grade quality, I could not pass this up. And it took me a while to get it, and once I got it, I, I pretty much went to work, and I said, I gotta do it right, and wow. All I have to say is, wow. The construction, the detailing, the um, the mechanics, the, the, the detail, everything, spot on. It, it pretty much 
it, it pretty much sets the bar, not only for whatever kit that Bandai will make, but also future uh, Master Grade SD kits, which now we recently got the Master Grade uh, SD Barbatos. But the Freedom is, it is a very, very unique build. A lot of parts, a lot of detail, um, very, very um, uh, poseable. You know, obviously you're going to need to stand, but it can stay up right if you have the wings folded up. But the cool thing is that the, the, the cannons can be, can be folded and pointed in front without hindering your, your wing uh, assembly. And the wings are new. Everything is new. Detail in that is new. It is, it is something to marvel and enjoy. If anybody has not gotten a kit like this, this is engineering at its finest. And I was very, very pleased with its overall construction. Painting came out well with this. I didn't have any issues. I Now looking at it now, um, I'm hoping to maybe get it detailed up a little bit more. Because I, uh, I am thinking of putting this up for, for Mosquito Con. I just need the decals and detail it up so that way I can have it ready. But if you guys get your hands on this or you see this, please do not pass this up. I would get this before you get the Barbatos and enjoy a very, very beautiful and solid build. Definitely one of my favorites for 2023. So my next kit from the Freedom, uh, from the Summer of Freedom builds was the real grade 144 scale Freedom Gundam GCP. Or the, uh, I think it's, for, it's the Gunpla China um, program, I think it's pronounced. I, I could be wrong. I know I always get it wrong. But this is a new real grade kit. Many thought it was, oh, it's basically the same real grade um, uh, free, uh, Freedom Gundam that everybody got years before. But no, 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 no. This is literally new, as in brand new. New design, new parts, new construction, new sections that were a little bit different than what it was. Still, it shows, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, um, you know, there's certain parts of the kit that looks the same, but you see notable differences around the leg, around the shoulders, around the actual rail, grand, rail cannons on the, um, on the waist. The shoulder parts are different. The wings are completely different because now you get these little support stands that holds up the kit in its position that you see right here. So it actually is a pretty brand new kit. It, it, it's pretty much almost apples and pears compared to the original real grade um, uh, Freedom Gun Day that I that actually built uh, a long time ago. It was actually one of my highest rated videos to date. I mean, it's no longer being looked at by people online anymore, but everybody was looking at that through the woodwork, and, I, and it actually generated a lot of uh, reviews on my, on my channel. But I said, I gotta build this guy because it looks so awesome. I, I lost a part on that, and unfortunately that's not going to be on display at any shows anytime soon. But still, showing you this if you guys plan to get it obviously you're gonna have to wait until p bandai announces it, uh you know announce a new circulation of this but i would not hesitate to get it because it is perfect it has it's the wing construction the the the, the back wings is a different construction detail or design compared to what i just went through with the with the master grade sd but it is also nice. Um, I would not pass this up. It is, you know, uh, hard to get and maybe a little expensive. But if you're if you're a freedom fan, I would not um, overlook this if you come across it in any online stores, or maybe some hobby shop has it and the price is reasonable. Definitely worth a purchase. And then the last freedom kit that I had to work on was this bad boy. I've had this 2.0 for a very long time. This is, of course, the updated version of the Master Grade uh, Freedom Gundam from the Seed series. And I am very happy with its overall work and design. Uh, the paint job, spot on. 
great. Came out good. Did some pre-shading. Get some little, little light weathering here. Panel lining didn't do that much, but I may have to focus on a little bit more. Um, I have the decal set that came with the um, Master Grade Providence kit when I bought the uh, premium kit that had all the uh, st uh, the decals for all the Master Grades. So I don't have to buy an extra set just to detail this up. I'm very happy with how it came out. I'm not kind of happy with its overall design choice of the over the head cannons. I was kind of spoiled with the Master Grade SD kit and of course the real grade, but seeing this, you think that, you know, there should have been more added on to this to, to you know, to get, get the most out of it. Um, but this is basically Bandai's um, flagship kit from the uh, seed line. And it is uh, very, very, very well, well done. Um, besides of the uh, over the head, you know, the shoulder cannons. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've seen, I've seen like this kit come out various versions. There's the um, regular version, the clear version, the special coating version, the titanium version, the metallic version. There's like so many versions of this kit that's all over the place. Now there's another one coming out with a di different color tone. So you're not going to, I don't think Bandai is going to let go on this, on this 2.0 anytime soon. I don't know if we're going to be using the same mold frame for the upcoming um, Freedom series uh, that's coming out next year, if they're going to use the same mold for the next version of the of the Freedom, or is it going to be a brand new one? I hope it is a brand new one because I was never a big fan of the inner frame settings from the shoulders going down to the arms because there's barely nothing in there. It's being held on by its armored plating. So I felt I was a little weak on Bandai's part, but I understand the reasons why, because of the proportions that they were able to, you know, uh, do replicate on this. Um, but I am happy with this build. I, I, yeah, it, it cost me a little bit, you know, cost me the normal price. Uh, I have the 1.0 version, which, uh, <laughs> not, Prime is not, is still like reeling the fact that I got that at a um, um, what do you call it at a um, garage sale a long time ago but getting this and painting it the way I like it perfect absolutely perfect let's hope we see a perfect grade kit of the Freedom Gundam so the next kit was the 144 scale high grade gun cannon but from the Cuckoo's Dolan Island animated movie that came out in calendar year 2023. Quite frankly, this is one of the most attractive looking high grade kits from the uh, original Gundam line I have ever seen. And yes, even though it's from the uh, updated movie, it, it still has a definite presence of detail and, and um, posability design, engineering, and let us not forget added on features. Because not only do you get the a backpack that has the cannons that you see here, you also have a backpack to hold the missile launchers. In the original high grade version, the missile launchers, and uh, you have to remove the cannons from the shoulders to replace it with the actual uh, missile launchers. But this one, you can switch either or. I think I remember somebody telling me that the the actual kit is based off the um, Gundam Origins line of the uh, of the GM gun cannon or the G, the gun cannon version, the prototype one or the early gun cannon, which I think I never got. Um, but it is very nice, uh, sturdy, strong, excellent detail, excellent features. I, I don't think I... The, the only thing that I was a bit disappointed, again, was the shoulders. Because there is a seam line that goes right through it. And you got to put in a lot of work to actually uh, sand it down to remove the numb marks. Considering that it is a, a round part. Um, this could have been easily fixed by putting two 
plates, two, uh, you know, molded uh, plates, one on top of the other. But I guess they decided to go with this route. Um, maybe somebody can vacuum form this and, and release it as a resin part. Um, but nevertheless, a very, very well-crafted high-grade kit. I think this was actually, technically, I want to say this. This is actually the best high-grade kit of calendar year 2023. Area was great, but this one is by far the best. And it's very easy to work with. Um, don't pass this up if you're, a, uh, if you're an OG fan of the gun cannon. Now, I was in the middle of debating whether I should do a customization kit or just continue painting and building. And I had two kits that took my attention. The Zowart and the Zowart Heavy that you see in the background. And at the same time, a video game, a video game came out that everybody wanted to grab their hands on. And that was, of course, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. And the Zowart had all the signature features of it being one of those Armored Core units. So I took it upon myself to actually take the Zowart normal and convert it into the Armored Core Zowart that you see here. Didn't want to mess around with the Heavy because the Heavy is nice on its own. But the this one, I put in a lot of extra work and detail that you see here. We're talking about combination parts from Kotobukiya, parts that I have left over from both high grade and master grade kits, option part sets, 3D printed uh, part sets, metallic part sets, and, and anything in between that I could find to make it unique into my armored core unit that you see here. I even went as far as not only painting it because I got myself a new airbrush, but also putting decals as well. I did this at the time when uh, Gundam Planet was holding a contest of some sort in reference to Armored Core, but with the latest announcement of Armored Core model kits being, uh, being made by Bandai, by the same team that does 30-minute missions, uh, that has now been extended till next year uh, at a later date, which we don't know. But in the meantime, I am actually very proud with this little design. This guy came out very well. Some areas I was I could have easily improved, but when you customize and, and scratch build something out of the blue, you, you know, you, you don't know when it will end until you have it right. And I think this is fine. I like it. It came out good. I made some modifications here and there, and I had a blast working on something like this. And I know you guys probably watched the videos last year and enjoyed my, my custom design. Uh, I hope to see your custom design as well. But for now, this is what I got. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And the last kit for calendar year 2023 is the Santa Claus version of my mass, of the real grade Epion Gundam Santa Claus version. This was a fun kit to build. Fun because I liked everything how it came out. Um, the colors came out perfectly. I used my new, brand new gallery, uh, Galaxy, is it Gallery or Gallery? I forget where the hell I go. Uh, yeah, the Gallery air Airbrush that I picked up recently. And like pretty much all the colors clipped in and everything is nice, nice and smooth. It's, this was a fun kit to build. Granted, it was never, never going to win any uh, awards, but hopefully it, um, popularity-wise, you guys enjoyed it. But, yeah, the, uh, like all the real great kits I have built before, this one, of course, was nice and neat and simple in its overall design and aesthetics. I was even impressed with the transformation on this kit, the, you know, based on its size. I had the Master Grade version, which I was never, uh, was never a big fan of, but now my, you know, now I feel better that I built the real great version and it came out better than I realized. Um, should, would I ever get, get this kit again to redo it again? I don't think so. Um, it is a nice kit and the proportions are well done and the transformation is good. It's a, there's a little, certain things are finicky with the, um, the whip because if you paint the whip 
if you don't paint it right the paint will peel off and if you use masking tape on it you're gonna peel off the paint anyway so I would just paint it once and hand detail it here and there and you're, and you're done however everything else came out nice perfect for the holidays and for some honorary builds uh, even though I built a few um, G-frame kits and small items and things like that the, my two noteworthy build happens to be the 30 mini missions 144 scale EX E E X M gig R01 Pro Veldi type Rex 01 that you see here with all the massive fire power that I was able to squeeze onto it and Ming's um, Evan Evangelion Unit One by by Ming of all companies. Um, this one is still like a perfect kit to actually take apart and maybe do something differently. Well, the Eva unit is just the Eva unit. It, it is huge, it is massive, it's ridiculous, and I should have gotten a stand when they had the opportunity. But, uh, yeah, these are pretty cool kits to build for calendar year 2023. And here they are, all the kits that I've worked on for this year. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Fifteen kits and scratch built kits that I built this year for 2023 painted detail everything normally i would make more in a calendar year this is actually maybe close to far less than what i normally make every year but i put a lot of love and effort in every work that i put into and i and i had fun not only building it but showing it off and i realized that quality in your work is better than quantity. I try to fill in the blanks, you know, put in the filler videos this year, but I wanted to show you the best of my work that I can do. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really do. Which one of these kits was your favorite build? Which one was uh, the one that you liked the most? Which one is the one that you did not like the most? And you have, uh, you know, you have questions about it. Leave a comment below and let me know. I, I, I you know, I don't mind your input both negative and positive. And with that being said, I hope 2024 will be a good year for everyone who's watching this channel. With that being said, I want to thank you guys all for watching, and stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You guys all have a great day.